big uh, political move uh, this afternoon. The fact that we understand that the cabinet has cleared a 10% quota for economically backward class. This is a big indeed move and let's discuss this uh, further. Joining us on the phone line right now, consulting editor Times of India, Sagarika Ghosh joining in. Uh, Sagarika, afternoon. A big move indeed. Uh, another mega announcement coming in from Prime Minister Modi and... Uh, the fact that the quota is purely based on economic classification, it's caste free, it's religion free. Do you think this is the master stroke uh, that Modi government needed for the 2019 elections? Uh, good afternoon to you. Yes, we are getting this big news in that there's been a 10% reservation quota uh, for the economically backward upper caste. It's not a uh, class. I would like to remind you that it's for the economically backward upper caste. So, uh, you know, it is an attempt, I believe, to uh, take some amount of corrective action after the electoral defeats that the BJP suffered in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. In Madhya Pradesh particularly, it was said that the upper castes were drifting away from uh, the BJP due to the, uh, as you know, the amendment that the central government had brought in into the SCST Act. As you know, the uh, Schedule Caste, Schedule Tribes Act had been, uh, in quotes, diluted by the the Supreme Court, but of course the central government then overturned that dilution and brought in an amendment making that act even stronger uh, uh, than before and restoring its, uh, its uh, strong positions in favor of the SCSTs. Now this is supposed to have um, alienated the upper caste. As you know, in uh, Madhya Pradesh, there was a big backlash by upper caste and the formation of the uh, what we call the Sapaksh or the upper caste parties, which were campaigning openly against the BJP. So this could be an attempt to woo back the upper caste who had drifted away from the BJP due to the, uh, due to the manner in which the government was wooing the OBCs and the lower caste. But of course, you know, uh, this is going to be a double-edged sword because it contains a bit of a backlash because by attempting to woo upper caste, there is always the, uh, there is always a danger that the OBCs, SCs and STs will perceive this as an attempt to undercut their uh, reservation that already exists. I must also point out here that uh, this uh, reservation might also be legally challenged because, uh, you know, if you add on this 10% uh, upper caste, uh, because, uh, economically backward upper caste quota, then it could be that the uh, co constitutional provision of 50% reservation will be overshot and then that could result in a legal challenge. So we'll have to uh, see whether this uh, move by the government is challenged legally in court or not. But for the moment, I believe that there's a possibility there could be a backlash from the Mandalite parties, from the SPs, from the BSP, saying that, uh, appealing to their uh, uh, SCST, OBC vote bank, and saying that, in fact, the government is once again moving to dilute the SCST, OBC uh, reservations that, in fact, uh, going towards the upper caste. So I believe it's a, uh, it, it's, it's a politically strategic move to win back the upper caste, but at the same time, could result in a backlash in the lower caste and OBC and SCST caste feeling that their reservation is being challenged. Um, but I believe this is once again an attempt by the government to shift the narrative away from uh, uh, the attacks that the government has been enduring over the past uh, few weeks. As you know, you've been uh, covering extensively what's happening in Parliament on the Rafael deal and all of that. So I believe this is an attempt by the government to shift the narrative away, to give itself another big talking point. Uh, the government is keen to shift the talking point continuously, to shift the narrative continuously in its favor, in its own favor. This is poll season. It is political campaign season, and the government is keen to have positive talking points. So clearly this is an attempt to create a positive talking point in favor of the government, something to tell people, something to, um, uh, you know, go back to its upper caste constituencies with. But, as I said, it's a double-edged sword. It contains a backlash. And by attempting to woo the upper caste, mm -hmm. there is a danger that the lower caste could be alienated and the Mandalite parties, such as the Samajwadi Party and the Bahujan Samaj Party, could uh, make uh, right. merry out of this and say uh, the government is once again abandoning the lower caste and attempting to take away their reservation in favor of upper caste. Right. But Sakura, you know, there, is, there is another point, whether or not there is enough time for this amendment to actually get passed through both houses. Precisely. I think that's a very good point. Uh, 
you know, again, uh, as you know, Mr. Yashwan Sinha has, of course, uh, tweeted uh, just now. I was just looking at it saying this is a jumla. There's no way that this can uh, pass the two houses, nor will it uh, withstand legal scrutiny because it takes the percentage of reservations be- beyond 50%. So that will make it open to legal challenge. But uh, you're absolutely right. It, it's unlikely that this, there's enough time for this uh, for this uh, reservation to go through. But again, you know, as I said, it creates a talking point. It creates a, uh, a, a you know a, a narrative. It creates a kind of a platform for the government to go to the people, which go to upper caste with saying, "Well, we tried. We're trying to bring in uh, reservations for the economically backward upper caste, trying to woo back the upper caste, trying to woo back those who've been alienated by the SCST Act." trying to woo back those sections who feel that Modi is bending too far towards the Dalits, towards the OBCs, uh, towards, you know, the Ambedkarite parties. So I think it gives the government a narrative. It gives a talking point. It gives a platform to woo back the upper caste. But whether or not it will actually see the light of day or come to fruition, that really remains to be seen. All right. So what's going to be the topic point, uh, talking point, you know, what's going to be the narrative? I mean, we have farm loan waivers already that has taken place. That was a way for them to appease the farm society, which on account of which many do say that the Modi government has lost out on the three Hindi heartland states. We have, of course, the latest big pro-poor move by the Modi government. And then you have the entire Rafale deal. So what is going to be the key talking point in the run up to the general elections? What is it that uh, all eyes are going to be on? Well, uh, you know, as we see uh, here, you know, the government is constantly attempting to change the narrative in its favor. You know, as the narrative is shifting away from the government, as we're seeing more uproar about Rafael, we're seeing more uproar about how the Modi government has ignored farmers, we're seeing uproar about rural distress. So the government is reacting by coming up with uh, initiatives to uh, meet all these criticisms. For example, as you rightly observed, the uh, farm loan waiver that the government is trying to uh, push out now this attempt to woo upper caste, to woo the economically backward upper caste, then to, you know, I think we're going to see, uh, you know, possibly many more schemes, many more uh, subsidies announced. And I also think that we might see a, a, a move towards backward caste as well. Uh, having wooed the upper caste through this reservation, there may be an outreach towards the backwards as well. So I don't think the caste um, uh, reservation factor is going anywhere. Uh, I think Mr. Modi will uh, will try to uh, sort of make up with, with the backward caste what he's given to the upper caste as well. So I think we're going to see a flurry of these handouts and reservations and SOPs and subsidies in election season. This is always what happens in ele- election season. Uh, and I think it's, uh, you know, I think the main talking point, of course, uh, has been over the last couple of weeks been the Rafael deal and the opposition has been on the front foot targeting the government. So I believe this is in many ways not only a strategic attempt to woo back the upper caste, because remember the BJP needs the upper caste. That is its core vote. And it needs the upper caste. It feels it has uh, lost out on that upper caste vote. So it's not only a strategic move to uh, win back the upper caste, but also to deflect attention away from the uproar uh, over Rafael and also give the government a kind of positive talking point, something it can take to the people. So I think the government going forward as we are into the poll season is going to try and generate lots more positive talking points which it can take to the people and say this is what we've done for you and this is what we've done for this section and that section. So I think it's, it's headline management, it's creating a talking point, it's creating a narrative all in the context of the poll season. All right, uh, Sakharika, thanks so much then uh, for joining in on ET now and giving us your take.